Hi, um, today I would like to talk with you on the topic of government. Um, a lot of people are wondering these days what's, what is government, what should it be like, where is it going and they're discontent about the current state of government. Um, to really understand where we are right now and where we're going we need to look at it from a historical perspective. Um, and I would like to use the analogy of the Indian caste system. In the Indian caste system you basically have five castes. The top caste is the Brahmanic caste, so they are the, uh, the priests, the scientists, the artists, the people who have kind of direct inspira inspiration. And if you look back at, for instance, uh, Celtic Europe um, or ancient Egypt, they were ruled by this religious caste. And uh, the second caste is the warrior caste. So these are the people who don't have the direct inspiration, but they do have the power, the money, the influence, the strength to um, yeah, impose a kind of an order on society. And if we look at, for instance, medieval Europe or the shogunate in Japan, you see that there are kings, warriors, lords, um, who control the country and unify it and guide it. Um, we've kind of left these two phases behind, so now we arrive at the third caste, which is the uh, merchant caste. Um, the rulership by the merchant caste is fundamentally different from that by the previous few castes. The religious caste, they work out of inspiration. They either it's a divine inspiration or it's a personal inspiration. Um, but somehow they get the guidance to see where society should be going, what is right, what is wrong at the current time and, and culture. If you look at the warrior caste, the warrior caste they're very much identified with the, their possessions, the, the country, its people, uh, the land, and they somehow seek to make its own people, its own country, its own land, its own religion even, uh, the dominant one. So they see it as a competition between themselves and other warriors, and they want their group to, yeah, to succeed, to be the most powerful, to be the strongest. So both of these groups have a basically social uh, tendency to, uh, to within them and within their rulership. If you come to the merchant caste, it's very different. Um, because the merchant caste is not identified um, with any specific group. They are much more international and much more uh, focused not so much on the well-being of the people as on the, well, the wealth, the economy, um, how much they enrich themselves, how much um, yeah, the economy and the other merchants are growing or prospering. And this leads us to our current crisis in government. And if we look at where it should be going, we have two more castes to go. That is the workers caste, which is actually the majority of the people. And um, here we would see the same problem also, that uh, they don't have the same sense of unity. They see themselves as a singular individual with their own individual path, with their tasks, with their talents, and they would like themselves to prosper. And this is actually the current cross points in which we find ourselves. People are becoming more individually aware so they also stop identifying themselves with their countries, with their religions and with their ideological groups. They become self-aware, they become aware of what is good for them, what is necessary for them to prosper, to grow, to develop themselves. And they actually want the government to allow them to prosper as individuals. But this is at odds with the current economic-driven government which doesn't see individuals as individuals or as humans with human rights, human needs, and that their personal development is important. They rather see humans as yeah, parts of the big economy.
economical machine. They are labor. And they should generate taxes, they should generate work, they should generate money. And we see that in terms of the media and education, people are no longer taught how to develop themselves, how to bring what talents they have within them um, yeah, to fruition, so they can be what they want to be. They are shaped by the education, by the government, by financial pressures to accept a job, to correspond to the demands of society and in a way be shaped into a money-making tool. And this is actually the next step, so this is what we need to change. So what we should be expecting from government is that they create um, a society in which personal development once again becomes yeah, very important and possible so that the individuals gain a measure of sovereignty, that it becomes about the individual development, once again, the individual growth, whether it's on a material level, or a spiritual level, artistic level, intellectual level, it doesn't matter. We want to grow ourselves, we want to develop ourselves. And out of our self-expression, our need to do something and be something, we will relate once more because if I create something of beauty and nobody sees it or if I want to heal somebody and there's nobody to heal or if I want to read poetry to somebody or take care of somebody I will need another person to manifest my talent and this is no longer a manifestation which is driven by, by lack of resources I'm not helping this other person or doing something for the other person because I want money, I want to be richer, I want to be greedy, I want to have a nicer car, but I will be helping the other person and meaning something to the other person because I feel within myself the desire to do so, the need to do so. It is my inner guidance which will lead me to social behavior and it should no longer be enforced by law or government. And unfortunately we're in transition phase, so it's a difficult phase for many. It's difficult to trust in yourself, in each other. But I hope we can manage and create a new type of government for the betterment of all. Thank you for listening.